Muchas gracias por invitarnos. Voy a hablar en inglés y compartir pantalla. Creo que sí. Perfecto. Uh, in our talk, we will propose an ecological framework to health, and we will. Sorry, no problema. And uh, we uh, will discuss the mainstream definition of health uh, and uh, we, we think that as a consequence of the emergence of different narratives about the environment during this pandemic, we are obliged to find a different definition of health, which includes the concept of environment. We will propose to characterize the environment through the concept of pathogenesis and salutogenesis And the key concept to understand how the environment can be described uh, in, in both this way is the notion of adaptivity, a, a notion coming from philosophy of biology. And we propose adaptivity and the new idea of social adaptivity as key concept to understand the relationship between health and the environment. But let's talk about what is health. Um, uh, I think that everyone in the Faculty of Medicine knows what, what health, you don't need a philosopher to, to tell you what uh, it is, but uh, the mainstream, one of the mainstream definition used by both uh, books in medicine and books in, in philosophy of medicine and humanities and social science is the definition given by the WHO World Health Organization in 1948, which says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. And uh, there are many problems with this definition. Humanities, medical theory, and philosophy of medicine have largely discussed the definition of health, as well as the concept of disease, illness, and sickness. And uh, I, I, I would like to suggest you to read the book recently published by my colleague, Christian Saporido, It's a, it's a book in Spanish called Filosofía de la Medicina, in which all these practical for health professional and theoretical problems, uh, issues of the definition of health and the debate uh, have been clearly presented. And also in, in the book, there is, a, there is a chapter dedicated to ecology uh, and uh, ecological framework to health. And it's, it's from there that we, are, we have started talking together and uh, uh, creating this talk and this paper. And uh, we have talked that uh, one of the big uh, problem in, in the conceptualization of health in this moment in philosophy of medicine, but in humanities and uh, in, in, in other um, branches is the fact that the role of the environment is, uh, is, has been poorly taken into, into account. It's, there is a problem with me. Okay. Um, and instead, environment is one of the emerging issues of uh, this pandemic not just because there are ecological issues, but for the same origin and, sp and, and spreading of this virus. And consequently, we consider that as a first step is, is to provide a better definition of health, which includes the environment. And we have found this document by the WHO in 1984, that's 40 uh, years after the first definition, in which health is defined as the extent to which an individual or group is able to realize aspiration and satisfy needs and to change or cope with the environment. Health is a resource for everyday life, not the objective of living. It is a positive concept, emphasizing social and personal resources, as well as physical capacities. And we want to, to underline that the two important elements in this definition are cope and the environment. Let's start from the environment. Here is a, another mainstream definition from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Environment is defined as the complex of physical, chemical, and biotic factors that act upon an organism or an ecological community and ultimately determine its form and survival. Okay, this is a classical one, but we think that we need more. And as a philosopher, we need I think to use uh, uh, 
system theory and system uh, ecology because they, they define the environment, they, they help to conceptualize the environment as an integrated and organized whole, in which the parts, and we are also part of the environment, are not added, yet are dependent on one another in a non-linear way. And the idea of the environment during the COVID-19 has to be analyzed, according to us, in this sense as the pandemic has complexified and questioned our idea of the environment. But uh, there are many narrations about the environment in, during these this last months. Uh, we will focus today on one of the most uh, powerful, most strong, and it is, it, it's uh, the one about patho pathogenesis. And so the description of the environment as carrier of disease or pathogens or viruses. Pathogenesis is, is, as most health professionals know, is the development of morbid conditions or of disease, more specifically the cellular events and reactions and other pathological mechanisms occurring in the development of disease. What we think that one of the most important, most, most powerful, most recurrent all over the media uh, characterization of the environment in this last month is the one related to pathogenesis. And the origin of the COVID has, has been described as zoonosis, spillover, the evolution of the viruses. The environment is, has been described as carrier of viruses as a, and as a menace for human being. This, for example, is, is, a, is, is a, from the United Nations Environment Program, in which is, is it's true, it's described that zoonoses are disease transmitted from animals to human, and they comprise the 60% of all infection disease in humans and the 75% of all emerging uh, infectious disease. It is true, we, we cannot be naive to not say, do not consider this, but it's, it's not just, it's just one side of the, of the environment. And if, uh, uh, traditionally, the relationship between health and environment is understood in terms of an agent as an organism that has to face external potential dangers, and thus the environment is primarily described as a carrier of pathogens, we have to understand that the, the, the role of the environment in a wider way. How? We think that uh, the environment can be described and as a possible description as pathogenic, but the environment is also salutogenic. Well, uh, salutogenesis is, uh, is a term that comes from Latin salus, uh, salute, it uh, uh, means uh, uh, health, so carrier of health. Salutogenesis, as uh, we'll, we'll explain in the, in the other slide, is a term introduced in 1971, uh, 79, sorry, by the medical doctor and sociologist Antonovsky. And salutogenesis refers to uh, uh, the fact that uh, we have to find the, the way to uh, provide health. And in this sense, Antonovsky questioned the individualistic and disease-based approach uh, in medicine, and he focused on the origins of health and well-being versus the origins of disease and risk factors. Thus, salutogenesis is based on resources for health and health promotion, promoting processes. And applied to our discussion, well, sal salutogenesis is, a, for example, salutogenic is a term that is, very, is used uh, a lot in, nowadays in environmental psychology to uh, analyze how the environment and the landscape specifically can uh, um, provide health and well-being for, for human beings. And applied to our discussion, it means that we have to take into account how the other phase of the environment is based on daily actions to improve health, both from the environment and the human being, because they are not separated. And uh, as a philosopher, we have to, to understand how these two characterization of the environment are related. And we think that the notion of adaptivity could be uh, could be an interesting tool, a conceptual and practical tool, because uh, adaptivity, as Christian will explain later, is a concept that we take from philosophy of biology, 
And usually adaptivity is a system capacity to adjust to changes in the environment without endangering its essential organization. So the fact that the, 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 we stress the, the word adjust and cope, and in general, biologi biological organisms include dedicated regulatory mechanisms that compensate for possible perturbations in ecology could be disturbances and keep the state of the system within certain ranges of viability. So we will use this concept of adaptivity and we will widen it to social adaptivity to better explain the interrelation between health and environment during the COVID-19 and the EOP during a post-pandemic era. But from now on, Christian Saborido will continue the, the presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much, Laura. So I'm going to start my, my part in this talk by explaining this, what, what is this idea of, of adaptivity? So as Laura has said, adaptivity or the concept of adaptivity of organisms has very well studied in theoretical biology and in philosophy of biology. Unfortunately, we do not have so much time now, so we can only sketch a very general characterization of, of this concept, but hopefully we, we think, or we hope it will serve to, to understand what adaptivity is and to show the, the implication of this concept for the question of the relationship between health and the, and the environment. So in very general terms, adaptivities is this is a property of living organisms that can be defined in this way as the capacity to adjust to changes in the environment without endangering its essential organizations. And organisms, in this sense, organisms are seen as uh, entities that can only live with boundary conditions that allow their self-maintenance. In other words, for life, it's necessary a relationship between the organism and the environment that make it possible, a very specific kind of, of relationship. I'm gonna to try to explain this with some examples. For instance, uh, we can see this image from a paper by Sadir Barandiaran and, and Matthew Ebert. This image shows us that it is possible to trace possible viable trajectories that an organism can implement to face possible to face possible changes in the amount of food and water in the environment. This is the idea of this, this image. That is an organism survives in environments with certain amounts of water and food while it dies in other environments. However, organisms are not simply passive entities. Living beings have the capacity to regulate their internal processes and the relation with the environment to stay within these viable trajectories. That these living beings have the capacity to adapt to a certain extent, of course, to changes in the environment. And this capacity, this capacity to, to adapt is what we call adaptivity. There are many examples of adaptive regulation or adaptive behaviors in, in organisms. For we it's very important to note, to, to take into account that adaptivity of living organisms is a phenomenon that occurs in a very diverse ways and at all levels of biological organization. But, um, I don't know, a very clear example is, is this one, the, the, the case of uh, body temperature regulation in the case of fever or, or a very cold weather. This is a very paradigmatic example of adaptive regulation or adaptive behavior on, on organism. But there are many other examples, for instance, I don't know, the, the chemotaxis in, in organisms as sample as, as bacteria. This is a very, uh, very direct example of uh, adaptive regulation. Or uh, even the capacity of regulation and adaptation can already be seen in processes as basic, as fundamentals as the lacoperon. So all these examples are very well studied in, in scientific literature and I don't know. We recommend the, the works by Leonardo Vig, Keparmin Mirazo, Alvaro Moreno, Matteo Mosio, and co-workers, because they, 
they studied this, this uh, phenomenon of regulation and adaptivity very, very deeply. And the connection between this idea of adaptivity and the, the notion of health, I think is quite obvious. No? The idea is that um, a healthy organism would be one capable of adapting its environment. So an, uh, an organism with good or with a normal adaptivity would be a health organism. This is a, I don't know, the first intuition about how to connect this idea of adaptivity with the general definition of health. So, of course, this idea is not new, it's not a novel idea. And uh, in fact, in, in very, very recently, The Lancet published an editorial entitled Precisely What is Health? The, the Ability to Adapt. And there in this, in this letter, the, the Lancet emphasizes the conceptual connection between the notion of adaptivity and, and health. This is a very important uh, work, uh, very, very influential in, in theory of medicine. Now. Uh, however, in this presentation, we will argue that this idea of organismic adaptivity has certain, certain has limitations. So it's, it's not very good to understand the relationship between health and the capacity to adapt the environment because it's not, uh, I don't know, yes. specifically, we claim that adaptivity according to this definition is only a property of individual organisms. It's not a, a property of society or communities only, it's a property of uh, organisms, specific organisms. And this, um, according to this definition, the environment is understood only as potentially pathogenic. And we propose that activity is also a property of social entities or communities, and that it also serves to understand the salutogenic roles of environment. Then adaptivity is not only an organismic feature or property, it is also a collective property of group of individuals. In other words, there is also a, a social adaptivity. Our hypothesis here is that the environment has both a pathogenic and salutogenic dimension, and that the concept of social adaptivity accounts for both dimensions, both for the pathogenics and the, and the salutogenic dimension. And we will defend that the community-centered medicine it's a very promising tool to understand and promote social adaptivity. So the, the community-centered medicine, we will explain what community-centered medicine is later, refers to the measures of that enhance social adaptivity, that promotes social adaptivity by facing, by facing, by confronting pathogenic environmental aspects and at the same time promoting or empowering the salutogenic factors of the, of the environment. Then, Social adaptivity, this notion of social adaptivity, would be a social system's capacity to regulate according to the circumstances, its states, its relationship with the environment and the environment itself in order not only to face potential dangers, that is the pathogenic dimension of the environment, but also to transform the conditions of the individual environment relationship, relationship to promote health, that is the salutogenic dimension of of the environment. Then, as Laura has explained in the first part of the talk, the environment has, in, in addition to a pathogenic potential, a salutogenic dimension. We are always insisting in this, in this aspect because we think it's a very, very important to understand the relationship between organisms and the environment and between the notion of health and disease to the notion of, of environmental environmental influence. So as Antonovsky has pointed out, this salutogenic dimension questions, challenges the individualistic and disease-based approach in medicine. And it's opposed to, to the pathogenical approach in, in philosophy of, of biology. An approach that addresses the salutogenic dimension should focus on the origins of health and well-being rather than only on the origins of disease and risk factors. In other words, the salutogenic approach focuses on resources for health and health promoting processes, emphasizing, for instance, the role of prevention, the need of preventive medicine, or the importance of health education in medicine. And from this point of view, uh, health is not so much an issue that affects only to internal organizations, 
but a process within an environment. Antonovsky and, and his followers, such as Lindstrom and, and Jenstrom, the authors of this, of this image, have explained this uh, salutogenesis of environment appealing to a metaphor that they call the, the river of life, you know, the metaphor of the river of life. According to this metaphor, it is not enough to promote health by avoiding stress or by building bridges, keeping people from falling into the river or helping people from drawing into the river because medicine has to help people to swim. That's the, the metaphor. Uh, from promotion, health education and preventive medicine, uh, medicine has the, the obligation or the goal to improve well-being or to improve health in, in people not only to avoid disease, but to promote quality of life. This is the, uh, the metaphor of the, of the health, uh, of the river of life in, in, this, in, this, in this approach. So, in, okay, within that, in this moment of health crisis, uh, and also thinking about, uh, in, hope a very close post-pandemic scenario, the importance of protective and preventive action seems pretty obvious. In order to avoid the risk we are living, we can think of the social distancing measures or the medical research we, we are promoting or the public health policies that are being implemented all over the world. And also for empowering people in the relationship with the environment, and in this sense is it's essential to take measures that promote the recognition of the biodiversity, for instance, or the community-centered medicine urban actions, such as the landscape evidence-based design of private and public buildings. So, okay, and in this slide, we consider that this is very, very necessary, it's especially urgent to demand a community-centered medicine. Uh, the last March was, uh, a group of specialists from the hospital of Bergamo in, in, and that time was the, the European city most affected by the, by, the, uh, by the COVID, published a very moving letter in the New England Journal of Medicine where they call for, for a change of perspective by the scientific community and the, and the political leaders. The, the letter is very, very moving, it's very impressive i recommend you i strongly recommend you you if you don't know it and this in this letter the, this group of specialists denounced the inadequacy of the patient center medicine and called for its replacements with what they call community center care or community center medicine uh, okay it is worth to note that the a community center medicine approach is not uh, confronting the person-centered approach. It's more a kind of complement of this uh, person-centered medicine. Uh, the community-centered medicine uh, aims to complement, to, to help person-centered medicine with effective measures such as home care, mobile clinics, or the limitation of hospitalization to a specific target of patients. And these measures have already proven to be very effective in the, in the decreasing of contagion. I think it's very important to say that it's a change of perspective, but uh, it's a call for, for a wider focus of the concept of medicine, on the concept of uh, assistant care. And we believe that this Italian experience, this uh, Italian call for attention, shows the importance of a community center medicine. In fact, we can we would like to defend that this COVID-19 crisis can be an opportunity to vindicate a medicine that not only serves to combat a potential crisis in the future, but also to implement permanent measures that improve environmental salutogenesis. For instance, the accessible healthy space and landscapes or better aided buildings or promote hand washing, facilitate healthy lifestyles to be more infection resistance and so on and so on. There are many possible uh, permanent measures that can be implemented to promote salutogenesis and not only to avoid potential uh, pathogenical factors of the environment, such as the, the virus. The 
Okay, and that's all. We, we, we have this, this conclusion, this very preliminary conclusions of our approach. First of all, we propose to, to reconsider. We think that it's all very important to reconsider the, the environment as autogenic, not only as a carrier of diseases or pathogens, but only as, as a possible uh, carrier of health or promoting of health. And according to this approach, environment is our daily setting, both urban and natural landscape. And landscape is our environment of proximity. That is, environment is the place in which we perceive and in which we are agents. It is not something detached from us. It's not something can, that can be pure or dangerous, but it's only that belongs to us. And a community-centered medicine, we, we claim is something necessary to, to promote social adaptivity, facing environmental pathogenic factors and promoting its satellitogenic potential. I think this is a, more or less the, the take home message of our talk here. You know, the, how is the, the necessity, the need to trace connection between the idea of social adaptivity, the notion of environmental salutogenesis, and the, the tool, very useful tool of uh, community center medicine to promote social adaptivity, to, to recognize and empower the salutogenic factors of the environment. I think that's all. Thank you so much. This, there are some references about that and our email because you have something. Thank you.